One of the first things I did to prepare the floor was paint the entire floor with Rust-Oleum enamel paint. I paid close attention to sealing up all of the seams and any imperfections in the paint. I don't want there to be a little pinhole or scratch someplace that might end up rusting in the future. Now as I said, I coated this entire floor and these wheel wells will also get coated with this Rust-Oleum paint and these little gaps in here where water and moisture can get in I'm going to seal all those up with this Rust-Oleum paint and I painted it last night most of the floor and now I'm going to go around and do the wheel wells and touch up any of these seams where metal comes together with metal and there's a gap Maybe you don't have to do this, but it's not going to cost me much, and I don't think it's going to hurt. One of the nice things about this is I don't have to do a real pretty job of painting, because all this will be covered up, and this paint is just functional to stop any rust. I always try to give you all the information so you can do this yourself if you decide to. It took one quart of this oil-based enamel to coat the ProMaster floor. Everything in the van should be done from the center line. You can't measure from the walls or ceiling because they're not straight. Here we've got our half inch hole. And then we've got our taper bit. Taper bit, drill hole all the way through. And that way your Sharpie will fit in. So this. Sharpie goes all the way through. That's going to fit in like that. And you put a couple screws in here and you're good to go. When doing your van build, cardboard is excellent to create templates. Start collecting all different sizes and thicknesses of cardboard now. You'll need them and it'll make your life a lot easier during your van build. Lots of thought goes into this van build. Here I am sitting, thinking about how to cut the floorboards. What is the best way to arrange these floorboards? Keeping in mind the placement of the sink, the shower, and the bike drawer slide. Plus, I know I want to be able to replace the floor in the garage without affecting the rest of the floor in the van. Deep in thought, finally, I figured it out. After that deep thought, I had to add to the template to meet the center line. After marking the cardboard template, I created a permanent template from door skin. Sometimes called Luon.
a very, very thin plywood. All right, we cut it. Now let's see if it fits. Oh yeah, that fits good. Now, it should be a mirror image because Promasters are symmetrical, so it fits on that side also. This will be cut from one full sheet of plywood, and so will the second one. They'll be identical. Uh, it will be much thicker than this. Why did I do it in this door skin? This is a template. This is the first van. I'm expecting there may be a second, third, or fourth van. So this template will make it easier, possibly when I build a van for you. So that's the reason that I'm spending the time to make templates, because I enjoy this work, and I can already see doing it again. So, Plus, this is a much more durable template than if I did it in cardboard. Because I know if I did it in cardboard, I would probably end up throwing it out or cutting it up for something else. If it's out of this door skin, even though it's a little more expensive, it's going to save me frustration down the line when possibly I do van number two. Anyway, so, so that's those pieces. Now you need to move down and do the other pieces, which should be much easier. The one inch XPS insulation is cut. Now one thing I wanted to mention is you want to make sure you have a gap. You need to have this gap. If not, it'll push up against the wall of the van and then it'll squeak. You don't want this squeaking. It'll sound like a cricket going down the highway when you're driving. Because remember, I keep saying this, the van's like a miniature earthquake going down the road. So you want to make sure that against your walls you have a gap built in that you can fill with some flexible caulk or insulation or just leave it blank. That's really important. Now coming around to this side, this is the passenger side seat and there is a pillar here this black pillar there's an electrical connection that you're going to want to be able to get to to hook up some electrical and some switches so you need to be able to remove this so this piece of insulation right here this needs to be removable so you're not going to want to glue that down you're going to want to remove that so that you can get this panel out so that in the future when you do your electrical you can get to the connector. Actually, this is loose. Let me show you that connector. So if you follow along with me, I will show you how to use this connector to hook up some of your electrical and be able to turn things on and off. But that's in a future video. The important thing is when you're doing your flooring, do not want to block this. You're going to want to be able to get it off in the future. Yeah, so it fits on just like that. So that's important. You don't want to have to take apart your floor later. It's another reason why I don't like gluing the floor to the van, and we're going to avoid that in my van build. Today, I hope to finish cutting out the rest of the floor. I've already got two of them cut. That's two sheets for the rear garage area of the van. And now I'm going to be working on the rest of the floorboards. For your information, it takes four 
four foot by eight foot sheets of XPS insulation and four sheets of plywood to cover the ProMaster 3500 extended 